All right, continuing on with my uh, rules intro to Tenka Toitsu. Uh, go back to movement for a little bit because it's kind of an important one. I kind of glossed over it there in, in my first video. but um, So there, your movement's going to depend on your orders. So if you're in an attack order, you're going to charge. If you're in a defense order, you're going to use deploy movement. If you're in a march order, your movement order, you're going to march. And if you're going to regroup, you're going to withdraw. So if your clan, you pick your clan chit, you're going to move according to what those activations are. Um, so if you're in an attack, if your clan is in an attack mode, it's going to charge. Okay, And charging um, units have three movement points. You choose one of your clan counters, one of your units of that clan, and they become the spearhead unit. And they have to move towards an enemy unit and the closest enemy unit in terms of movement points. The other members of that clan, other units of that clan, have to end their movement, if possible, next to that spearhead unit that you designate. Okay, So that's charge movement. Deployment movement is in if you're in defense uh, defensive orders, you basically just move one hex. Um, the restriction restriction there is you can't enter an enemy zone of control unless you have it canceled out by a friendly unit. If you're in uh, March, which is uh, if you're in a movement order, you uh, get, I believe, four. Yep, you get four. You cannot enter an enemy zone of control. You also can't exit an enemy zone of control either. So zone of controls are kind of sticky in this game, uh, in that those terms. Um, you can also, if you're in march orders, you can you benefit from rows and paths, so it makes movement quicker. If you're charging, or if you're uh, well, deployment doesn't matter, but if you're charging, you don't benefit from road movement. Okay. And then finally, there's withdrawal. So if you're in regroup, which is a rally order, uh, you have to withdraw away from enemy units um, until you're at least four hexes away. You, you get a number, I believe eight movement points. Let me see here. Um, where is it? Withdraw. Uh, move this unit no further than eight hexes until it's at least a distance of four. Um, Okay, so maybe you just move eight hexes. Yep, just eight hexes. So it's not eight movement points, it's eight hexes. Okay, so <laughs> if you're withdrawing from an enemy unit, it can pursue you. And in fact, it may have to pursue you. Uh, so if they do, they'll just simply follow your unit up until they hit a zone of control. So that's kind of it there so there is this loss of control when you're in attack mode both with having the charge units and having to pursue units you can make a roll i believe against their quality to um to try and um change out of that uh pursuit mode okay so we'll go to the um activation sequences the five obligatory phases well they're really the five uh, chits that have to be drawn. There's an exception for night or fatigue turns. But um, there is a march chit. I'll look at them here. So you have a march chit, you have a rally chit, an initiative chit, and each side has this combat chit. These five consist of the, the whole turn. When, when all five of these, when the fifth one's drawn, the turn ends. Okay. If there's any clan still in the cup, they don't get played. They'll be, you'll roll on an orders table for them. Okay. But when you draw these, now these two combat chits are just unique to the sides. These are used by both sides to do things. So the march uh, chit, um, you, you roll to see who goes first, and then you choose an eligible clan to perform a march, or you can pass. Okay. So this is uh, any of your clans that have uh, been assigned the movement order can move. So it's basically an extra movement phase for them. Okay, the combat chits, these are, there's one for each side, and when you draw that, the units of your side um, go ahead and they're going to attack. Um, so that if they're in attack orders, they must charge an enemy unit, and then all units in enemy zone of control must attack. All right, fair enough. Rally phase, okay, so again, all units in regroup. They're going to go ahead and do their withdrawal, and they're going to rally, or attempt to rally. 
Finally, you have the initiative chit here. The initiative chit is an optional one. So it, if you all clans uh, in movement or regroup and have at least one of their units in enemy zone of control, plus any other one clan of the player's choice may try use this. You don't have to because there's a danger. You're going to roll for that clan, and if you roll a, an unmodified one, you're going to change that clan orders to regroup and immediately perform withdrawal. That may not be what you want. Um, but if you change it successfully, uh, you can put it through it into attack orders or, or you know, whatever, whatever orders you want, basically. Okay. Uh, when you draw a clan chit, again, this is called the clan phase, but it's a clan chit. Um, you can, the first thing you can do for that clan is try and change the orders. There's a table um, where you can roll to change orders, much like uh, reminiscent of, of uh, Musket and Pike. So it's, you know, it's easier to change from attack to movement than to defense or regroup. Um, and, you know, it's easier to change to uh, attack from, say, movement. So um, there's that table there. You can try and do that. Uh you can then if you're in attack mode you'll do the charge if you're in movement mode you'll move if you're in defense you can move, do an, a deployment move then you must attack all um, and basically for each of these uh, you have to attack um, when, when your chit's drawn if you're in an enemy zone of control uh, then you if you're in regroup you can rally you can try and get rid of those step losses and you can move etc okay this is an interesting rule, activation delay. So if you pull your clan's chit and you decide, I don't want to activate that clan right now, you can throw it back in the cup. <laughs> so uh, you can't do it two chits in a row, but that's kind of a neat mechanism. I, I like that idea of, of being able to kind of delay uh, your activation if you'd like. All right, um, so at the beginning of the turn, this was the command sequence, you're gonna have a delay phase. So any chits that were in the bowl from the previous turn, that um, that weren't chosen because the turn ends before they were chosen. You're going to roll for them on this messenger table, and this could be, have the chit. You know, the order just delivered, but without the proper etiquette, would an insult. The order is ignored. Place the chit in the reserve box. So that could happen, or it could be placed on a delay box or two delay box or or whatever. Um, so it's kind of a neat little thing, the messenger table. Um, then you're going to put all chits on the one box on the de uh, delay track into the cup and slide other chits down that are on the delay track. Okay, and the delay track, you can see that here um, for uh, Hashiba Hideyoshi. So it goes up to four. So those clan chits, you know, will end up here and if they, they'll slide down in essence. Okay, so after you do that, you're going to roll for your command points and each side has a separate, uh, on, on their chart has a command table so that kind of shows some of the better generals or whatever are going to get more command points um, than others. Um, there's some modifiers here. Then you can use those command points uh, to each command point can select a clan chip from your reserve box on your Honjin. These are the Honjins, your, your, your kind of your, your force you know, boxes or whatever, your individual player boxes. Honjin. Okay. Um, so then you're going to do that. There's some limits, though. You have to be within range of your of your general, 15 movement points. Um, if it's greater than that, you can still pick those chits, but they're going to go on your delay track, and that's going to depend on how far away outside of 15 movement points they are. Um, so that's how you're going to set up your cup at the beginning of the game. Okay. And that explains that. Okay, battle plans. You know, one of the things I think is very interesting. So you're going to choose a battle plan. Now, in some cases, um, these battle plans are not going to start off right away. And that's the case here in Yamazaki. Uh, they're not going to be in place. And in that case, you have to try and activate them. And to do that, you're going to have to accumulate command points and then make a roll against that a number of command points to activate your battle plan. Once you have your battle plan in place, you can assign this number of, you have a limited number of these tactics. So, uh, for example, let me, let me take one that has um, a little bit of everything here. Mm, no. Okay, well, let's do this one. So this is Hoshi, which is the arrowhead, an impetuous and massive charge. Okay, you see a number of these Totsugeki 
uh, tactics. By the way, uh, famous advanced squad leader scenario. That's Brian Yaus's favorite scenario, or used to be, uh, from Brian Yaus from MMP. It was a, on the old ASL message board, Totsugeki. Um, but anyway, there's these um, uh, Totsugetsu tactics. There's these uh, Karakaras, three of them, and Kotai. Uh, so what you can do once your battle plan's in place is you can assign a command to that clan, spend a command point to do so. And then that clan will be able to immediately do that tactic. And in the case of Totsugeki, um, it will immediately switch to attack orders. It charges with five movement points instead of three, and it gets a plus two on its blue dice in combat. That's great. Um, for the Kotai, uh, the clan which applies this tactic immediately switches its orders to regroup, then rallies, and then withdraws, and it doesn't um um, trigger pursuit, and there's no combat when using this tactic. So it's kind of a, a planned retreat. Um, however, there are these na these these uh, uh, katakatas. They're actually uh, negative <laughs> kind of things. If you draw one in one of these, you, you'll put them in the bowl, and your opponent will assign this to one of your clans, and it will change that clan um, to attack. <laughs> so it'll basically, you know, if you don't want a clan that you, you're trying to regroup and that's drawn, um, your opponent can make that clan attack. That's very kind of cool, I think. Very interesting. <laughs> very interesting thing. So that, and then you'll write that down when you, when you do assign these because you only have a limited number during the game. And so you'll just put the clan in the turn. The turn just means just kind of to verify, I guess, with your opponent. Doesn't really matter so much. Okay, and there's other ones, fast movement. Um, you can do a combined attack. Uh, that's one of the, the um, rules as well. Okay, uh, going into combat resolution. Yeah, this is, a, uh, this is an interesting part of the game. The combat resolution is definitely different, but it, it makes a lot of sense. It provides, I think, for a real interested narrative to the game. So when you do a combat, um, you're going to look on what's happening here. So attacking unit which move to come into contact with an enemy unit, okay, they're going to do a Shingeki, okay, and that's going to be an assault. And they're going to add, they're going to roll, you're always going to roll two sets of dice, two blue dice and two red dice, okay. And in this case with the Shingeki, you're going to add your Elan of your unit to the blue dice and you're going to add your mass to the red dice, okay. So if you are not moving to contact, you started next to the enemy, you're going to do a, a run send. And that means there's no modification of the blue dice. You're going to add your Elon and your mass to the red dice. Great, right? Okay. Now you're going to look at the defender. And it's um, basically uh, units not in attack fighting a moving attacker. Um, you know, that's going to be closed ranks. And they're, the defender is going to add, subtract their firepower from the blue dice and they're going to subtract their Elan and Mass from the red dice. If um, unit in attack fighting a moving attacker, this is a counterattack. And again, there's these modifiers. And then other, other attacks will do that as well. Then you're going to add up all those modifiers, plus or negative, and you're going to roll these four dice. And in this case, let's say there's there was no all the modifiers you could even out, and we get a 7-7. Seven, seven. So 7 on the red, 7 on the blue. Well, that's each side's going to take a step loss. And that is kind of how the combat works. It's I really like it because it has quite a bit of narrative in it uh, to it. Um, and then there's some modifications here for ba battle plans um, as well. Okay. Uh, leader loss. You can have uh, leader loss. Um, if you get two step losses in a combat, you roll a die on a one, there's going to be a leader loss. And the leader, the leader killed, uh, put a leader killed marker on the unit, so it's going to lose its leadership value. And then the opponent's going to get a Bundori, which is worth a victory point at the end of the game. That's basically the head of that leader and that they're going to take as a trophy. Okay. Um, so if you lose a unit from a clan... The other units in the clan may rout, and that's uh, you roll for that. And then you have advance after combat, um, and that, which I'll show in more detail when I do the playthrough, and that's basically it. 